Okay, let's look at our next type or next method that we're gonna unpack in this chapter. So we've done Venn diagrams, we've done tables, we did a little bit of counting. We're still gonna circle back to counting when we look at um, rolling two die and a deck of cards. Um, we haven't really seen formula only. We'll get to some of that a little bit later on with some multiple choice, but in example nine, we're gonna unpack tree diagrams with these types of formulas. So let's get going on this, okay? So a tree diagram is a special type of graph used to determine the outcomes of an experiment. It consists of branches that are labeled either with frequencies or probabilities. Tree diagrams can make some probability problems easier to visualize and solve. So you don't always need to make a tree diagram. Um, if I'm reading a problem and it sounds like it can be, like it can be represented with a tree diagram, I usually, um, I usually make the tree just because it helps me visualize it. Uh, and, and we're gonna make a bunch of branches. So as I go through this problem, I want you to think about for every woman that we're gonna talk about in example nine, what are the variables? What am I keeping track of for these women? So it says ovarian cancer afflicts one of every 5,000 women. In April of 2011, Science Magazine reported on a new computer-based test for ovarian cancer detection that examines blood samples. The test was highly sensitive and able to correctly detect the presence of ovarian cancer in 99.97% of the women who have the disease. However, it is unlikely to be used as a screening test because the test gave false positives 5% of the time. Draw a, t a tree diagram. All right, so that's a bunch of information to take in. So again, let's kind of narrow our focus down to what is the variable? What am I keeping track of for these women? And I'll help you with, there are actually two variables in this problem. So as we read through this, they're talking about women who have ovarian cancer, and they're talking about that ovarian cancer being detected. So what's happening with each of these women is I'm putting them in to one of four boxes. And here's what I mean by this. The first thing I'm gonna keep track of with these women is whether or not they have ovarian cancer. So I will say here, variable number one, whether or not a woman has ovarian cancer. And you can hear that this is a categorical variable, right? Your answers would either be yes, I have it, or no, I don't. So there's the first variable, but that's not the only thing I'm gonna keep track of on this women, on these women. I'm also gonna keep track of whether or not they tested positive or negative for, how they, uh, for having the disease. So my variable number two is my test result or I'll say screening test results, ovarian screening test results. And with these two categorical variables, and again, this one's also categorical because you're gonna test positive or negative, it actually puts women into one of four different groups. And if I just kind of sketch it off on the side, we could have women who have the cancer and test positive, women who have cancer and test negative. We could have women with no cancer, they could test positive, and women without cancer, and they could test negative. And so when we're looking at these, when you hear that phrase down here, false positives, this branch would be the false positive. If you didn't have cancer and you tested positive, that would be a false positive. Over here we have, I would argue, the more dangerous one, the false negative, where you did have cancer, but you tested negative. So you just wanna be aware that when you have these two categorical variables, and each of them have two responses, right? We're breaking these up into binaries in terms of, yes, I have cancer, no, I don't. Yes, I test positive, no, I don't. That ultimately, since I have two options here and two options here, I have four branches that I'm going to wanna draw. And sometimes there's a question as to, well, which one goes first? Do I put the cancer branch first 
or do I test positive and negative first? And that's a great question. And here's a way to kind of examine what's given to you so you can discern which way to go. I want you to just take a look at the numbers that are quoted here, right? So we have one of every 5,000 women, right? We have over here that we detect the presence of ovarian cancer in 99.7% of women who have the disease. However, it's unlikely to be used and we get this other number because you get false positives 5% of the time. All right, so if we take a look at how this, these three numbers are broken down, okay? I want us to take note that this number is about whether or not you have cancer, right? It's dealing with variable number one. So first number here deals with variable number one. This one here, the 99.7%, we're talking about testing positive, right? So testing positive deals with variable number two, and these false positives also deal with variable number two. So you have two numbers that deal with variable number two, and you only have this one number that deals with variable number one. And it quite literally pairs out that way. So if I only have the one number dealing with variable number one, that's gonna be my first set of branches. The two numbers that deal with the second variable, since I have two of them, they'll be on the second set of branches. So let me actually draw this out and then I'll, I'll come back to this idea. So in terms of drawing a tree diagram, I, I got four branches or really four categories that I'm gonna play out right here. So let me scooch this up so that we can get a look at my tree diagram. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna draw my first set of branches and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room, okay. So here we go. I will do branch number one, branch number two. All right, so I tend to just write words along the branches and numbers next to them. You can flip flop it if you want, but here we go. So the first thing I need to decide is does a woman have ovarian cancer or does she not have ovarian cancer? So I'll put here has ovarian cancer. and then does not have ovarian cancer. And I want us to pay attention to the way the, the, these events are phrased, right? Has ovarian cancer, does not have ovarian cancer. These are complementary events. And as we discussed, way back in example five, the first time we saw it, not on either of the revisits, but complementary events need to have probabilities that add to one. So for example, if this was 50%, this would also have to be 50%. If this was 25%, this would have to be 75%. These two numbers, whatever I'm about to, have, have, whatever I'm about to write here, have got to total out to one. Okay, so let's see what number they gave us. They told us here, one out of every 5,000 women have ovarian cancer. Okay, great, so I put that number there, fantastic. All right, now, by complement, the number that goes here has to be the number that I would add to one out of 5,000 if I wanted to get it to total out to one. Or if we just take a step back, if you've got 5,000 women and one of them has ovarian cancer, then how many don't? And I'm hoping you're thinking 4,999 do not have ovarian cancer. And if you weren't thinking that, if that number didn't come to your head, no problem. All right, so then we'll go to our calculators and we'll say, let me clear this out. I will say, hey, I know this number of one out of 5,000. I'm gonna subtract it from one and use the complement rule. So I will do one minus one over 5,000. I will hit enter. I will turn that into a fraction. Oh, and my calculator can't help that or can't handle that. So if you wanted to write instead of 4999 over 5,000, if you wanted to write the decimal point 9998, great. And just so that you can see these are the same numbers, let me show you. All right, there it is. So my calculator couldn't handle turning this decimal back into a fraction, which is fine. So I just want you to hear, you could have either of these answers or either of those numbers, excuse me, listed on that branch. All right, so there's my first set of branches. Great, so a woman, I'll put you into one of these two categories. Yes, you have the cancer, no, you don't have the cancer. And then after that, regardless of whether you have it or not, you're gonna do a screening test. So we have the next set of branches that we can play out here. And again, this is gonna be, I'm gonna test positive or negative, test positive or negative. Okay, 
So I need to go looking for the data that, or the, the probabilities that they gave me on this and let's go find them, all right? They're, they're hidden and some of them are inferred in here. Oh, before I start that, let me write positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, so as we go through this, it says the test is highly sensitive and able to correctly detect the presence of ovarian cancer in 99.97% of women who have the disease. So right here we see it, of women who have the disease. There's that conditional sentence. So I am pushed along this branch because it says of women who have the disease. So we already know the women that they're talking about with this, this percentage have cancer. So I'm along this branch. I've hit this condition. Of all of these women, 99.7% test positive. So I will write that as 0.9997. If you wanna write it as a decimal, feel free. Um, it's totally your call. I'm keeping them fractions and decimals this time, okay? But I want you to hear it. Of the women who have the disease, right? There's that conditional phrasing. So it pushes me along this branch and then we've got 99.97. And again, for these women, this second branch or the second set of branches, it's, it's binary. They either test positive or they test negative. So of those women, if 99.97% test positive, the complement that, that decimal, that complement is what tests negative. And again, complementary events, their probabilities always add up to one. So if I wanna solve for them, I will subtract this number from one. So I will do one minus 0.9997. And I get over here, well, it's in scientific notation, but that is 0 0.0003. Because we've got the three times 10 to the negative four here. So I will write 0 0.0003. And again, take note, these two numbers, they add up to one. And if you don't believe me, let me just show you real quick. Oops, 9997 plus 0. 0.0003, and we're looking at one. That's what complementary events mean, right? Their probabilities add up to one. So again, for all of the women who have cancer, if you're along this branch and you take that screening test, you will either test positive or negative. So of these women, 99.97% test positive and 0. 0.0003 test negative. Okay, so there's those set of branches. We still gotta figure out these guys, and then I gotta show you how tree diagrams work. So it says, however, it is unlikely to be used as a screening test because it gives false positives 5% of the time. So false positives mean that it's testing positive even though the women don't have cancer. So we are told in that number that the women don't have cancer, right? It's inferred, or I should say it's implied. We have to infer it. All right, we're told they don't have cancer and it gives a false positive, so it scooches us along this branch. So I know this number is 0.05. So of the women who don't have cancer, 5% are told that they do have cancer, right? which is a really large amount. It might not sound like a lot, but that's a lot of women uh, being told they don't, uh, being told, excuse me, that they do have cancer when they don't actually have it. All right. Now, if you don't have cancer and you take this screening test, you will either test positive or negative. These are complementary events. So I want you to think what number is complementary to 5%? So what number, what decimal, what percentage would go over here? If you can get it in your head, great. And if you're not there yet, no problem. Let's use the complement rule. So I will do one minus 0 0.05 and find out that was the decimal 0.95. Okay. So there is our first tree diagram that we put together. And I just wanna kind of highlight some points that are happening here. So in each of their individual branches, right? This pair, this pair, this pair. These are complementary events. You either have cancer or you don't have cancer. You either test positive or negative, test positive or negative. And take note for the little pairings of these branches, these probabilities always add up to one. That's the complement rule, right? These little pairings of branches, added up to one, complement rule. These little pairings of branches added up to one, complement rule. When it comes to trying to figure out which set of branches do you put first? Do I put the cancer branches first or do I put positive or negative first? Take a look at the information, the numbers given to you. So I mentioned this before, but if we go back to, I only had one number on whether or not women had cancer. If you only have the one number, that's gonna be your first set of branches. Because you can see over here, there's two sets of positives and negatives, right? Two sets of screening test results. And I had two numbers on screening test results. That's why I wanna put these numbers in the second branches, or I should say these events, I wanna put positive and negative in the second branches. 
All right, so we've got this, but, but let's talk about what this all means and where does the and live if we're talking about a tree diagram. So I'm gonna put this off to the side here. So the and, all right, if we wanna find the and, it lives along the multiplied branches of the events you're interested in. All right, so multiply particular branches. And I'll, I'll talk about what that means in just a moment. So the and, you're gonna multiply the particular branches that you are interested in. So before we get to all of the stuff that's listed below, I just wanna show you how these things are playing out. Now, initially I said there are really four outcomes. You can have cancer and test positive, have cancer and test negative. You don't have cancer, test positive, don't have cancer, test negative. So before we get to these problems, I just wanna show you how this tree diagram is working. So I'm gonna box this off here. So if I asked you, what is the probability that a woman has cancer and test positive? Okay, so I could start to ask this. Here becomes, here starts the and questions. So if I want the probability that a woman has cancer and tests positive, I wanna find the particular branches involved. So am I on the top, 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 bottom, bottom, top, bottom, bottom? Well, let's, let's play it out. Cancer, okay, I'm gonna go on the top branch, right? Test positive, I'm gonna stay along the top branch. So for cancer in positive, it's top branch, top branch. So what I wanna to do to find the and is multiply these two numbers. So this will be the product of one over 5,000 times 0.9997, okay? And if I remember correctly, that's an extremely small number. So let's do 0.9997, oops, let me just do this the right way. One out of 5,000 times 0.9997. And we get basically 0.0001994. Ooh, so I'm gonna try and just squeeze that in, 0, 0, 0. One nine 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 four. All right, and if you want to round that to point oh 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 two, that is great. I just don't want to cut anything off on the first example that we're talking about. All right, so that is one branch. Now let's say, for example, I ask you, what is the probability that a woman has cancer and tests negative? Okay. So again, if I ask you for an and, you want to multiply your particular branches but you just gotta figure out which ones they are. And you're, you got four options, right? Top, 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 bottom, bottom, top, bottom, bottom. Well, if it's cancer and negative, I wanna go top and then bottom. So here, I'm gonna do one out of 5,000 times 0 0.0003. And let's see what number we get here. It's gonna be extremely small. All right, so we're gonna do one out of 5,000 times 0 0.0003. And we are looking at, whoo, all right, that is seven zeros and then a six. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. Zero point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. And for all intents and purposes, it's zero, right? So again, thinking about this, that's that's a kind of that's a great thing, right? If you have cancer, you're not going to test negative, basically, with this this screening. That's great. So it's got really, really low probabilities for a false negative. And that's important when we're trying to figure out screening tests. We don't want women who have ovarian cancer to get negative test results. That's dangerous. All right, but let's keep going because I want to play out all four outcomes. So if I had asked you what's the probability that you don't have cancer and you test positive, so we'll say cancer complement and positive, right? And I only put the complement there because I just want us to remember what the complement means. All right, you could have written does not have cancer, no problem. All right, but if I don't have cancer and I test positive, bottom branch, then top branch. So now I wanna multiply these two numbers. We've got 4999 out of 5,000 times 0 0.05. So let's see what that result is gonna give us. So 4999 out of 5,000, oops, times 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.04999. Okay, and then the last one you can see, I'm gonna do probability that you don't have cancer and you test negative. 
And this is again, this is just me showing you how the ands work on a tree diagram. And I'm obsessed with the ands. I've mentioned it before, but I'm really into these ands because they show up in Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Four, Formula Five. And I need to know how to find the ands with all of these methods. All right, so we're still going with this. If I don't have cancer and I test negative, it's bottom, bottom. So we've got 4999 out of 5,000 times 0.95. And let's see what that number is going to give us. 4999 out of 5,000 times 0.95 is 0.94981. Okay. And before we move on, what I'd like us to do is I want you on your calculator, push pause and try and add these four numbers. These should add to something very specific. And if they don't, then one of our, some of our number crunching is wrong. So I'm gonna put yet another little barrier here and we're gonna do the total. So like I said, just push pause, add these four numbers. They should add to something extremely specific and extremely familiar. So I'm gonna clear all of this out just so we have it. So I'm gonna go 0 0.00019994 and this was the one with seven zeros and then a six. And then we had plus 0 0.04999. And then we had plus 94981. And what did I get? One. Should I get one? Absolutely. This is ultimately your sample space. If you've got a woman, she fits into one of these four categories. She was either cancer and positive, cancer and negative, no cancer and positive, no cancer and negative, right? So every woman I would talk to has to fit into one of these four categories. These outcomes are ultimately my sample space and their probabilities total out to one, right? Going back to chapter one, when we talked about relative frequencies, that relative frequency column should always total out to one. Same deal here. All of our probabilities from our tree diagram should total out to one. All right, so you have your first look at how tree diagrams work and how we can calculate the and probability. So let's start going through all of these um, and seeing what we need to need, what numbers we need to crunch. All right, so let's scooch this up just a bit. If I can keep my tree diagram in view, that would be great. I think it's still in view. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about what is the probability of testing positive and having cancer. So the buzzword I see in there is the word and. Okay. And if I'm on a tree diagram, I know that I wanna multiply the, the particular branches. So if I want the probability of testing positive and having ovarian cancer, right? We actually calculated this just uh, in the previous um, part of this example. Now, this is written in the opposite order, right? This says positive and cancer, and we would have written it as cancer and positive, but again, the ands don't matter. I should say, excuse me, the order doesn't matter. So it's fine. So I'm gonna go probability that you have cancer, probability that you tested positive. Oops, let me scooch that down. I don't think you can quite see it. So there we go. I'm gonna go cancer and positive and multiply the two numbers in that particular um, set of branches. So I'm gonna go one out of 5,000 times 0.9997. And when we do that, what number did we wind up getting? Oh, this was the point 0.00019994. There we go, okay. All right, now the second question here is slightly different. This is what is the probability I should be circling these buzzwords, right? Anytime you see probability, you owe me a, a number between zero and one. What's the probability of testing positive? Well, in terms of testing positive, you'll see that the positives showed up on the second set of branches, right? And it doesn't say cancer and positive or no cancer and positive. It's just, how did you test positive? And there's actually two ways to test positive in this example. So the probability of testing positive breaks down to, well, I could have cancer and test positive, or I could not have cancer and test positive. So let me write that out. The probability of testing positive comes down to I could have cancer and test positive, or I could not have cancer and test positive. 
Those are the two ways that we will get positive test results in this particular example, right? So a woman might have cancer and test positive. She might also not have cancer and test positive. And you heard me say the or, all right? When you have an or, if we go back to these formulas, right? If I have cancer and positive or no cancer and positive, I would add their probabilities and subtract out any overlap. But there is no overlap, all right? These two events are disjoint. You can't have cancer and not have cancer at the same time. That's disjoint, so there's no way a woman would fall into one of these two categories, meaning that this and here, at the end of this, this probability formula, this is zero. That's why I only have to add the disjoint branches. So you're gonna hear me frequently say, when it comes to tree diagrams, when we have a probability of testing positive, or I should say, when I give you an event and it has more than one branch involved, add the disjoint branches. So let me put that here, add disjoint branches. And I want to reiterate this because it can be a lot to take in. If you were along this branch, if you're on cancer and positive, there is no way for you to be along no cancer and positive. So no woman is on this branch and on this branch at the same time. All of these events are disjoint. So cancer and positive is disjoint from cancer and negative, is disjoint from no cancer and positive, is disjoint from no cancer and negative. And when events are disjoint, their probabilities of their intersection is zero. And if I'm gonna plug that into formula one, this always goes away in a zero. So all we have to do is add the disjoint branches. So we're going to add these two products together and see what we come away with. So if I was on the cancer and positive branch, if we remember this was going to be one out of 5,000 times 0.9997, and then no cancer and positive was 4999 out of 5,000 times 0 0.05. Okay, and then I'm gonna see what that number is. That's going to be my answer, and it should be a decimal between zero and one. So here we go. I've got one out of 5,000 times 0 0.9997 and then I'm gonna to add to it that disjoint branch of no cancer, so 49.99 out of 5,000 times 0.05, and we basically still get 5%. The reason being that this, was, uh, this number here was so close to zero. Okay, so we've got, all right, 0.0502. All right, so let's go on to this last one. All right, so this is determine the probability that a woman who tests positive using this method actually has ovarian cancer. All right, so determine the probability that a woman who tests positive actually has cancer. So who tests positive? That's our condition right there. All right, so we know that the woman tested positive. So here is our conditional statement. All right, it didn't actually say given that a woman tests positive or of the women who test positive or if a woman tests positive, but this is trying to communicate to you. We know the woman's testing positive. What's the likelihood she actually had ovarian cancer? And researchers use this question all the time, right? If you're gonna get a positive test result, what's the likelihood that you actually had the disease? We have to ask that question when examining screening tests. So I want the probability that a woman had cancer given she tested positive, right? So again, before we get to the, to the number side of this, this is t trying to take a look, like if you're gonna tell a woman she has cancer, what is the probability she actually had it? Because this can be a really devastating uh, diagnosis to get, right? You're being told you have cancer, so you, we want to know, like, if you're going to tell a woman that, or anybody for that matter, what's the likelihood they actually had it? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, I've got a conditional, conditional probability here. So I'm going to use formula number two. And I'm specifically not going to use formula number three because I'm not allowed to. I don't know that these events are independent, so I don't have formula three at my disposal. Now, going through this, we have cancer given positive. 
So I'm going to do cancer N positive over the probability of positive. So that's how I'm going to substitute A and B for the words in my particular problem. So let's go write this out. Okay, so I want the probability of cancer and positive over the probability that a woman tested positive. Okay, and just while you're getting that down, I'm going to highlight the word who just so we can remember that is yet another version of a conditional probability. Okay, so let's take a look. We see the and, all right? I know I'm gonna multiply the branches involved from cancer and positive, because that's how we handle ands. We multiply particular branches. So if I look at my tree diagram, I'm gonna scooch back up real quick, and then I will scooch us back down. So I've got my tree diagram. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go cancer and positive. So I'm gonna do one out of 5,000 times 0.99997. 999, I think I said one too many nines, but you get the idea. All right, so let's go back here. All right, so we're gonna go on the numerator. Cancer was one out of 5,000. And then 0.9997, okay. All right, then it's asking me for the probability that I test positive. Now, we just did that up here, but I'm gonna repeat the whole thing because I, I really want us to try and understand what's going on here. So I want the probability that I test positive. So let me go back down, here we go. So if I want the probability that I test positive, you have to look how many different branches involved getting a positive test result. Well, I had one branch up here, the top top, and then I had another branch, the bottom top, right? There were two disjoint branches because the women that are on this branch are never gonna be on this branch, all right? There's no overlap, which means I just wanna add the separate products. So I'm gonna, when I say products, I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together and I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together. And whatever those two products, those two multiplied numbers are, I'm gonna add them. So I'm gonna do this product plus this product. All right, so let's go back down to our fraction and see if we can get that, that to work out. All right, so as I go through this, here we go. We're gonna have on the denominator one out of 5,000 times 0.9997. That was the top, top branch. I'm going to add to it the disjoint branch of bottom top. So 4999 out of 5,000 times 0.05. All right, so take a moment, get that down. We're gonna practice putting this in our calculator and it can be a little tricky. So typically what I do is I'll do the numerator first and the denominator second. Like I'll just crunch this number, find out what it is. I'll crunch this number, find out what it is, and then I'll divide the two. Um, because when I try and put all of this in at the same time, there's so many parentheses I'd need to take care of, I'd probably lose something in the shuffle. So let me show you what I mean. I will take a look at the numerator. Let me clear all of this out. I'm gonna do one out of 5,000 times 0.9997, and I will get that, that number that we've talked about before, so 0.00019994. All right, and then I'm gonna see what number I get on the denominator. So let's do the denominator. So we've got one out of 5,000 times 0.9997 plus 4999 divided by 5,000 times 0.05. And it looks like I'm getting 0 0.050189994. And I could round if I wanted to, but I, I, I think it's safer. It's not even I think it's safer. It's safer to save your rounding until the end. The sooner you round off the numbers, the less accurate your answer will be at the end of it. So I'm gonna take this number and divide it by this number and get 0.00. Well, I don't know what I'm going to get, but let me plug this in. And it looks like I'm going to get about 0 0.00398. So if I want to round that, now I'll round to three decimal places, I'm looking at about 0 0.004. Okay. Now, if you wanted to put all of this in at the same time, you can. Let me show you what that would look like. I just urge you to be really careful on your calculator. So if I do one out of, I'm gonna do the numerator and I'm gonna protect it with parentheses. 
and then I'm going to divide by the denominator, which I'm also going to protect with parentheses. So I could do all of that at once and it should give me the same decimal. And again, if you wanna do that, more power to you. I just really wanna urge you to be careful with your calculator. All right, so with that, let's, let's think about what this means, okay? We were doing the probability that if you tested positive, you had cancer. So I'm gonna say, I know what this was rounded, but I, this is basically four out of a thousand. So I wanna put this further into context because this screening test did not make it out of the research phase. They canned it as soon as they got these test results. And, and let's talk about why. This said, determine the probability that a woman who tests positive actually has cancer. And we got 0.004, or you could write that as 0.4% if you wanted to think of it that way. But I think it's more helpful to think of it in terms of the fraction. So what this is saying is if you were to tell a thousand women you have ovarian cancer, how many women actually had the cancer? only four, All right? So let me say that again. Let's say we were gonna tell a thousand women, you have cancer, because that's the given, that is happening. What was the likelihood they actually, or how many actually had cancer? Just four. Or another way of thinking that is that means you told 996 women that they had ovarian cancer when they didn't, which is a huge, huge number to be telling, hey, you have ovarian cancer, when you don't, which is why this, this screening test never made it out of the research phase, all right? So only 0.4% of the women who tested positive actually had cancer.